Craig Stewart here with Willow Haven Outdoor and one of nature's most amazing trees is the good old pine tree. It can be used for so many different things out in the wild. Uh, it can be eaten as food, you can make pine needle tea, you can use the roots as cordage, you can use the limbs themselves as building materials. But the product from the pine tree that I want to focus on today is the sap, the pine resin. Uh, because it actually, combined with charcoal, makes an outstanding pine resin glue. Almost as strong as modern day epoxy. So I want to show you how to harvest the pine resin from the pine tree. And then I'll show you how to mix that with charcoal. And then I'll show you a real life application where you could actually use it. Almost any pine tree I've ever seen has some place or spot on it that has been damaged by either um, a storm or a limb breaking off or insects such as in this case drilling into the side of the tree and causing holes and wounding the tree. And the pine tree reacts by filling those holes up with sap or pine resin and this pine resin while it looks bitter and dry right here can be melted down mixed with charcoal to create an amazing pine resin epoxy when you're harvesting this you really don't want that bark so just chip that bark away and all you want is that pure dried pine resin. My formula for pine resin glue is one part charcoal to three parts pine resin and that has typically worked out really well for me in the past. These sticks here, it's kind of funny, these are pieces of willow and I don't know if you can see the texture on the outside of these. Well that texture is from beaver teeth because a big huge beaver has spent the past three days out in my backyard chewing down almost an entire willow tree. And so I went out this morning and collected some of these pieces and I'm just gonna leave these with this texture because I think it's kinda cool. So we're gonna be using the pine resin glue that we make to actually assemble these ferro rods. I've got some blank ferro pieces here as you can see, I've got some deer antler pieces and I've gone ahead and pre-drilled those out. And we're going to permanently glue these ferro rods into these antler pieces using our homemade pine resin glue. So what I'm going to, the first step to this process is to melt our pine resin nodules here. I'm going to melt that down. While I'm melting that down, I'm going to grind up my charcoal and then I'm going to mix the two together. Okay, as you can see, the pine resin is starting to melt down from the heat of the fire. You could easily do this outside. You know, I'm just doing it inside today because it's freezing and raining outside. Um, you could easily do this by the heat of an open fire. While the pine resin is continuing to melt, I am finishing up grinding the charcoal into a fine powder. Once, once your pine resin is completely melted, you need to start working pretty quick. And what we're going to do at this point is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start sprinkling in and stirring in some of this crushed charcoal. Now what this charcoal does is it acts as a binding agent for the resin. All the little crystals and that charcoal binds to that resin and makes this resin much more durable once it hardens. Just going to get as much of it as I can. On the end of that stick there. And this is going to harden just like this on the end of this stick. It's not sticky, it's not gluey, you know, like I'm not getting any on my hands or any on my clothing. You can see how hard that's becoming. I can carry this with me, I can tuck this in my pack, 
And whenever I want to use this glue for any purpose, whether it's making fish hooks or building these ferro rods, which we'll do today, all I have to do is heat this up a little bit and it'll get back to that gooey consistency so that when I use it, it's pliable and then it dries rock hard. I've got a little tea light candle here today to uh, to use, but you could easily you could easily just put this in the fire, and I immediately smell that pine resin. Woo. Okay, I'm just heating this up. Because this is going to be the end that we're going to stick into our pre-drilled hole here on this antler. Okay, now that I have a nice amount of glue on my ferro rod, what I'm going to do is I'm going to really loosen this stuff up because my pre-drilled holes are almost exact and I don't have a whole lot of wiggle room. So I'm going to really heat this baby up, get it nice and it's probably not a bad idea just to All right, that's really seated well in there. And I mean, I already can't even move that, man. So what we'll do is we'll let this dry. So all three ferro rods are assembled. The only thing I need to do is just carve away that excess glue. The only thing you really need to remember about making pine resin with charcoal, uh, pine resin glue with charcoal is if you apply too much charcoal, your glue gets really brittle, okay? If you don't apply enough charcoal, it just doesn't have enough binding to have any strength. So you'll have to practice so that you know exactly how much charcoal to put in. Like I said, my my rule of thumb is one part charcoal to three parts pine sap. Really, really clean up well, and it makes for a very, very nice ferro rod. This one has a really nice handle on it, and as you can see, we're going to get tons of wear and tear out of this ferro rod, and I promise you that this pine resin glue epoxy net natural made epoxy is never going to fail you so there you have it all finished three absolutely perfect ferro rods with deer antler tops glued in with a natural pine resin glue that you watched me step-by-step -step instructions how to make if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them as always thanks for your views